Hey, this is Math 6, Unit 7, Lesson 18, using common multiples and common factors. In today's lesson, I'm going to do the first part of it. There, It kind of goes on for a while for you to practice some more, which I want you to do in some class or group work. So I'll do it for a little bit, and then you can do it on your own, and then we'll come back and check homework, all right? So the first activity is called Keeping and Setting a Beat, and your teacher is going to give you some instructions for playing a rhythm game. So as you play the game, think about the questions. When do two sounds happen at the same time? and how does it relate to common factors, common multiples. So here's a rule. You could play a game where you uh, maybe listen to like a drum beat or a metronome, and maybe you need to clap on every other beat. Okay, one person claps on every other beat, and another person's going to say, yeah, maybe on every third beat. Okay, so if you just kind of have something tick, tick, tick like this, Maybe go a little slower, but whatever. The idea is that someone's clapping on every other beat. So clap, 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 right? And then the other person's counting every three, and every three beats they say, yeah, 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 right? That kind of thing. It gets hard. You have to have a good rhythm, and it's hard for me to talk and think about that at the same time. So that's the idea. Now let's move on to some playing with factors and multiples. So here we go. Work with a partner to solve the following problems. At a party, Elena is buying cups and plates for a party. Cups are sold in packs of eight, so eight and in cups, and plates are sold in packs of six. She wants the same number, plates and cups, so we're going to find the number of plates and cups in each requirement, how many packs of each, and some other quantities at work as well, so two others. So we're going to be playing with eight and six and seeing where we can find, in our case here, a the uh, the common multiples. So the the sorry the cups are at eight and the plates are at six so let's see what we got here so for six we're gonna go six twelve uh, eighteen twenty four thirty thirty six forty two forty eight fifty four sixty sixty six and seventy two it's far enough there for the eights we're gonna go with eight and sixteen and twenty four and thirty two and forty and 48 and 56 and 64 and 72. Okay, so find a number of plates that meets her requirements. So we want to have the numbers be in common. So this meets her requirement 24, 48 meets the requirement, and 72 meet the requirement there. Let's play with 24. So a number of plates and cups that meets the requirement could be something like 24. That works just fine. So how many packs would she need? Well, in this case here, this is one, two, three packages of cups and one, two, three, four packages of plates is what she would need. Are there other quantities out of work? Yes, we found 48 and 72, and we could find more if we wanted to, but we stopped there because we ran out of room. So what would those be if we did those there? Well, that would be looking at three, four, five, six cups and four, five, six, seven, eight plates, and then seven, eight, nine cups and nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 plates. And then we're talking about packages of those, right? So those are some other options there as well. So we have three, six, nine, and we have four, eight, 12. All right, so that's the first one. Now with your partner, look at the second one. You can hopefully do these with your partner first, and then we're coming back and checking them out together. If you're working at home, you do them on your own, then check them as you go through. It says tiles, we've had tiles before. Restaurant owners replacing restaurants bathroom floor with square tiles. The tiles will be laid side by side to cover the entire bathroom with no gaps and none tiles can be cut. The floor is a rectangle, 24 by 18, right? We've had that before, we have a 24 by 18, and we wanna make sure that we've put all the tiles in there and fill all the space. So essentially, we are looking for factors of 24 and 18 that are in common that would make a square that will fill that space properly. So to do that, we'll take 24, and we're gonna find its common factors. We know one and 24. 2 and 12, 3 times 8 gets me 24, 4 times 6 gets me 24, and then I'm back going the other way, 6 and 4, 8 and 3, 12 and 2, so on. For 18, I can get 1 times 18, I can do 2 times 9, 
and I can do 3 times 6, and then I turn around and go the other way, 6 times 3, 9 times 2. So, in terms of common factors, our common factors are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Those are our common factors because they're on both lists, aren't they? 1, 2, 3, and 6. Because she wants to make the largest possible, the greatest common factor is going to be the largest one, and that would be 6. We'd want to have a 6 inch tile that would go in that uh, bathroom to cover the floor. How many are needed? Well, you have to think about this. I need to cover 24 here and 18 there. So if I divide by 6 and divide by 6, that will tell me how many I need in each one. So 24 divided by 6 is going to be 4 on the top, right? So I need 4 up here. And then on this, 18 divided by 6 is 3. So 3 there. So 4 by 3. And if you were to draw this out, you'd end up with 4 times 3, which is a total of 12 tiles. Are there more bathroom tiles that would fit the whole floor what, that she could use? Yes, she could use a one inch tile, right? Or a two inch tile and a three inch tile. Those would all work as well. You would just need a lot more than the six inch tile. Stickers. To celebrate the first day of spring, Lynn is putting stickers on some of the hunter lockers along one side of her middle school's hallway. Well, that would be a bad idea at our place. Don't do that. The stickers never come off and then that's a problem. So think that through Lynn celebrate a different way maybe all right um, all right she puts a skateboard sticker on every fourth locker and a kite sticker on the fifth locker okay so we have skateboards and we have kites and we're gonna go up to 100 lockers here skateboards is every fourth so we have 4 8 12 16 20 24 30 30, oh, what am I doing? 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. That makes more sense. 44, and then 48, and 52, 56, and 60. All right. And then we're going to go with the kites, which is every fifth one. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60. So name three lockers that will get both stickers. So we're going to have a common multiple at 20, at 40, and 60. Those lockers are going to get both stickers. Okay. After Lynn made her way down the hall, will the 30th locker have no stickers, one sticker, two stickers? So where's 30? Well, 30 is right here. Here's 30, but it's only on one list, so it just gets one kite sticker. It's all that it is going to get there. So in this problem, we were using the um, least common multiple and multiplying out until we found some matches there to see where the stickers would line up at. Okay, let's do one more of these using our tools we've learned recently. So the school nurse is assembling first aid kits for teachers. She has 75 bandages, 90 throat lunges. The kits need to have the same. So we're going to look for factors that work here. So for the bandages, which are at 75, bandages can become 1 or 75, become 3 and 25, and they can become 5 and 15. Those are my factors of 75. For the lunges, which are 90, lozenges, sorry, 90, I don't know what I was saying before. 1 and 90, 2 and 45, 3, 30, and then we can also do 5 and 15. Um, and we can also do oh, 5 and 18, I'm sorry. 5 and 18, 6 and 15. Okay, so these are my, my factors of 75, my factors of 90. So I can make a one giant kit with 75 and 90, that's possible. I can make three kits with 25 bandages and 30 um, uh, lozenges, that's possible. I could do five, and I can also do 15, okay? So these are all great, these are all common factors, one, three, five, and 15. The largest common factor is gonna be 15. And when she does 15, how many bandages are there for 15? Everybody gets five bandages, and the lozenges, everybody gets six. 
All right, so what kind of mathematical work was involved in each of the problems? Well, for all of them, we found multiples every single time. For the party, because we were um, multiplying things out, we found the least common multiple, just like we did for the stickers. We multiplied out, made a list, and we found the common multiple. For the other ones, the kit and the, uh, the tiles, we were finding factors, and we found the greatest common factor there. All right, there are more problems for you to do here. If you look at 18.3, these are more for you to practice with and see what you can come up with. Again, once to work with um, in your group and make some predictions, have some conversations about what you would use, whether you use common multiples, common factors, least, greatest, and practice those things out together. And there's problems, I think there's five, six problems here to work on. And that's the rest of this lesson there. And some more activities, you just kind of put things together. So that's it for today. And we're going to pause there and let you do some more games in class if you're doing those. Otherwise, come back and check homework in just a few minutes. All right, here we go. Homework for our last lesson of Unit 7, Math 6. Oh, I'm excited about that. Probably more than you are. If you can believe that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be looking at May, Claire, and Noah are making signs to advertise a school dance. It takes May six minutes to complete a sign, Claire eight minutes, and Noah five minutes to complete a sign, and they're working for half an hour. Okay, so we know that May takes her six minutes per sign, Claire eight, and Noah five. So we want to see if they'll complete any signs at the same time and how that's going to work out. So let's see. Think of it this way. Think of it like a list. Every six minutes, May completes a sign. She completes one at six minutes. She completes one at 12 minutes, 18 minutes, 24 minutes, and 30 minutes. We're only going 30 minutes because that's a half an hour. For Claire, she does one at eight minutes, 16 minutes, 24 minutes, and then of course there's 32, but we're not going to count that. It's not time. And Noah's every five minutes. We have five, we have 10, we have 15, we have 20, we have 25, and we have 30. Okay. So will May and Claire complete a sign at the same time? Well, here are May and Claire's lines, and we can see with their list, they're going to complete one at 24 seconds. They're both going to complete one. May will be completing, completing her one, two, three, fourth, and Claire will be completing her third. How about May and Noah? Um, yes, because why? They both complete one at 30 seconds. So that's another yes right there. How about Claire and Noah? Do they have anything in common? Looking here, we would say, no, they do not. And is there a place where all three complete the same time? No, we have two and two, but no place where all three complete at the same time. Number two, Diego has cookies, cookies, cookies for bake sale. He wants to make bags that have the three cookies in the same combination. How many bags can he have without cookies left over? So we're going to be looking for the greatest common factor of each one to see how this is going to work out. So let's do our chocolate chip, which is 48. We can do our vanilla cookie, which is 64, and our raisin cookie, which is 100. All right, so finding our common factors. 48 can turn into Obviously, 1 and 40. I'm not going to write the 1s right now. Let's just skip to the 2. So 2 and 24, 2 times 24. 48 divided by 3 works. 40 divided by 3 is 16. 48 divided by 4 works, which is 12. And also 48 divided by 6, which is 8. So those are all the factors for 48. 64, our factors are 2 and 32. 4 and 16. 8 and 8. And our raisin cookies, we have 2 and 50, we have 4 and 25, we have 5 and 20, and we have 10 and 10. So we want to look for some um, common factors. In this case here, our common factors, they all have in common. We can say they all have 2, right? There's a 2, 2, and 2. They all have a 4, 4, and 4. Um, 6, nope. 5, nope. That's eight, nope, nope, just two and four is all I see. Those are the common factors. So how many bags could he make? Well, he can make two bags or four bags. Let's do a two bag. If I'm doing a two bag, and you can see B is finding our solution. So a two bag and a four bag. Let's see what those are going to have. Two bag and four bag. We're going to have for the chocolate chip and the vanilla cookies and the raisin cookies. 
how much is going to be in each one of the bags. For a two bagger, you'll have 24 chocolate chip, 32 vanilla, and 50 raisin. For the four bag, you'll have 12 chocolate chip, 16 vanilla, and 25 raisin. So those are the two different solutions you come up with for this problem right there. All right, number three, find the product of 12 and eight. Sure, 12 times eight is 96. What's the greatest common factor of 12 and eight? Well, here's 12, here's eight. 12 becomes one, 12, two, and times six, three times four, and that's it there. Eight is one times eight, two times four, and that's it there. So the most, the largest number they have in common is going to be four. So the greatest common factor is four. How about the next question says, what is the least common multiple of 12 and eight? So we take eight, we have eight, 16, 24, and then we look at 12, 12 is 12 and 24. So 24 is the least common multiple. Got it. Find the product of the greatest common factor, four, and the least common multiple, 24. Uh, so four times 24 is 96. So what do we notice about this question and question one? They are the same. It wants you now to choose two other numbers and repeat the same steps. Do you get the same results? That's something I'm gonna let you do and you go ahead and do that on your own. Pick two numbers, find the greatest common factor or multiply them together, greatest common factor, least common multiple, then multiply the common factor, least common and greatest common and see if it's the same. Figure it out, you can do it. Number four, given these points, name a second point so they form a vertical segment. If I'm gonna form a vertical segment, then that means the X stays the same. So whatever I pick, the X stays 5.5 and I can change the Y all I want. It can be 10 and that's fine, up to you. For B, to keep the horizontal, on the horizontal line, the Y needs to stay the same. So that means that when I look at my solution, I'm gonna have 3.5 no matter what, and then I can put any number here. I could put 10, it doesn't matter. As long as the Y matches there, we're okay. And that one is there. So that's the idea. Last one, some mental math here. We see they're being both being multiplied by a half, right? Okay, so you end up with something mentally, in my head, here's what I saw. In my head, I saw 37 over two minus seven over two. I saw that stepping up there, that up there. And 37 minus seven is 30 over two, which is simply 15. So I'm just writing out because that's the, what I saw in my head as I thought about it. For this next one, the, what I looked at mentally in my head, what I see, I see 40 and 60, which is 100. So what I'm really seeing is 3.5 times 100, which is 350. And this last one, what I'm really seeing, I'm really seeing a thousand times five, which is 5,000, but that's, I need to take away a five. So I'm gonna take away five, you get 4,995. Hard to show mental math with pencils, but that's it. Okay, that's it for today and for this unit. Good luck on the rest of the stuff coming up and we'll see you next time.